hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got ourselves another children's toy. Well, this show is no stranger to children's toys, and for the most part, they have all been vehicles. So, recently, my granddaughter took an interest in spinning tops. She loves these things, but she doesn't have the dexterity to give it a spin. And she discovered that I have one in a cupboard that I made years ago um, that I can make work for her. But again, she doesn't have the dexterity to hold on to that brass ring and to pull the string to get the top to go. Now, I've made spinning tops on the show before, but they are the ones that are worked or they're operated by spinning it, by spinning your fingers. Um, I'll post a link to that show below if you're interested. But today's show is a little different. So let's head over to the bench and we'll see what I've got in mind. Well, as with most of my toys, they start off with a pattern that I've designed. And for this particular one, I want to start off the build by doing the launcher handle. Now this can be any species of wood that you want. Heck, it can even be plywood. Um, you make one of these from 5 8 inch thick material. So you're going to need a blank that will be 5 8 by 1 inch by 6 inches long. And we're just going to cut that out of a scrap piece of cherry left over from our toddler's brewster seat. And with that, you have a couple of options now. Um, you can scale off of this drawing and cut it out and drill the holes that you need, or you can do like I'm going to do and take this piece. I coated one side with masking tape. I'm going to carefully cut out this side profile pattern here. This is the bottom one on our pattern sheet. And once I get that cut, I'm going to spray the back with spray adhesive, let it tack up for three minutes and apply it carefully to the surface here where our masking tape is. Once I get that applied, we're going to head over to the drill press. Well, I've installed a 3 8 diameter drill bit over here at the drill press and I've scaled off of our little top plans and I have center punched an inch and a half back and centered on our 5 8 thickness. And we need to drill at that point a 3 8 diameter through hole. And while we're here at the drill press, we can also drill a hole in this section right here, just for a blade entry hole for um, the scroll saw blade. Because once we get that drilled, we're gonna head over to the scroll saw. Well, I have a number seven reverse tooth blade installed in the saw. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut this center cutout here. And once you get that cut out, we can then cut our last two lines here for the handle of our launcher. And that essentially is our launcher handle finished. So at this point, we can take the pattern off and guys, give this thing a really good sanding all over, um, being sure to break all sharp edges. After all, you're going to have little fingers playing with this and holding it. So break those edges, give it a good sanding, and then we can move on then to the next step. Well, the top part of this project is going to be turned on the lathe. So I have this scrap of mahogany that I found in the rack. Um, I think it's two and three quarters by two and three quarters, and it's roughly two inches thick. Now, what I've done is right in the center, I have drilled a five eighths diameter hole that is nine sixteenths of an inch deep. And in the middle of that, I don't know if you can see that, but I have a 5 sixteenths diameter hole that from the top of the block measures one inch deep. 
Now the purpose for that 5 16th diameter hole will become a little more clear later on in the program, but the 5 8 diameter hole is for one of these, and this is for a collet that we will mount here in our um, 5 8 diameter hole, and this will solidify it on our chuck over at the lathe. So with our mahogany blank chucked up here over at the lathe, the very first thing that we want to do is we want to turn this round. Now guys, I've said it a million times before, I'm gonna say it again. I see a lot of guys online that are turning, uh, especially rough turning without a face shield. That is a disaster waiting to happen. Um, so guys, please get the face shield on. So let's get this turned around. Now guys, the shape that I have on the plans for this toy are nothing more than a suggestion. But if we're going to go with those plans for now, the first thing I want to do is right up here at the collet, the very first thing is I want to turn this to a diameter of two and one quarter inches. Now I don't think we need a video of that. It's the exact same thing as turning round. So just get this turned down to the dimension of two and a quarter and then we can carry on from there. Now on the plans, <laughs> I kind of feel weird calling them plans because they're so simple, but on the drawing or the pattern for this top, um, on mine about three eighths of an inch down from the top right here, we're just going to place a mark and this mark is going to represent the end of the taper and that will be the top of the tops taper. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna get in here with a detailing uh, chisel and I'm going to very gently slope this down from the top to this mark. just like that. Now we know that we placed that 5 16 diameter hole one inch deep. So that will be the next mark that I want to place on here because uh, we want to make sure that when we're doing our taper um, for the bottom of our top that our taper does not make the top shorter than or short or smaller than that one inch mark because what will happen is we'll end up uh, cutting into that 5 16 diameter hole and essentially losing the point or the tip of our top. Kind of hard to spin on your axis when your axis has been cut off. So what I'm going to do now is paying attention to that, I'm now going to generally shape this to give the point at the bottom and uh, I gotta make sure that we don't bring this tip any higher than that one inch point.
And once you're happy with the shape of your top, give it a good sanding. And there we have our top body. Now, I didn't exactly follow my pattern. Um, I came close and that's all that matters. We're just looking for a general top shape. You don't have to have it exactly like what I have on the pattern. Um, here's a case in point for wearing your mask, guys. Look at that crack. That crack right there, I didn't see that when I first put this on the lathe. And at any point in time, now it turned out okay, it didn't blow apart. Um, but at any point in time, the chisel could have grabbed that and it could have just exploded on the lathe, at which case these pieces are coming right at you. So get your face shield on while you're turning. You never know what's inside as you turn it uh, around. Anyway, what we have now is we're going to make or install the stem of our top. And I have a piece of 5 16th diameter dowel. It measures 2 and 5 16ths of an inch long. And 3 quarters of an inch down from the top, centered on our dowel, I have drilled a 1 8th diameter hole. And I have countersunk, just a slight countersink, on both sides. Now the reason for that countersink is to help little fingers to get the pull string into that stem. So we're simply just going to take this now, going to put a little dab of glue in that 5 16 diameter hole that we drilled earlier that I said you would find the use for soon enough and glue our stem into place. And while we're waiting for this to dry, we can make our pull tab. Well, in order to make the pull handle, I've taken a length of half inch dowel. It is two inches long. And right in the middle, I've drilled a 3 32nd diameter hole. Now, depending on what string you use, um, you can change or alter the size of that hole. I've also taken a file and I've filed a groove all the way around our piece to give something for our string to uh, nest in, I guess we'll say. Now this string, truth be told, is actually one of the interior strands from a piece of paracord. So it's a very strong string. Now this is a 12 inch length. Um, I'm not so sure that I'm going to need that much. You don't want to have so much that you're, uh, that you're going to create a strangulation hazard. So um, I honestly think though that with that 5 16th diameter shaft on our top. I think that this um, 12 inches may be a little too long for this top, but we're going to find out. So either way, we're going to thread this through and then wrap it around this uh, groove and tie it in a knot. And once we get that knot tied and we're happy with it, I'm just going to put a little drop of CA glue on there to hold it tight so that it doesn't slip. Okay, and truth be told, on the opposite end of the string, I coated about the last quarter of an inch with CA glue and hit it with a little bit of accelerator um, just to make it so that it won't fray and so that the child can easily fit this and thread this into their top. So, how does it work? You basically take your top, put it into that 3 8 hole in your holder, and then your string will fit in here, in that hole. You want to have it so that there's maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch protruding out the other side, and then you can just spin your top to wrap your string around, your, um, around the shaft of your top. And then from there, you just take your pull rod and give it a tug. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. That is absolutely spectacular. And you know what? While my granddaughter will probably need a little bit of help to load this, um, I mean, it spins fantastically. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of a wobble to it, but I'm okay with that. Um, she won't care, and I sure as heck don't care, but uh, what a great little toy. And, I mean, 
Honestly, guys, what did it take? A little scrap of mahogany, a scrap of cherry, a little piece of dowel, and you've got a toy, which is a classic, that'll last for years and years and years. So now, if you want, put a finish on this stuff, and uh, you know what? Let the kids play. And there you have it. A child spinning top. Guys, this project is so simple it's not even funny but yet the amount of joy that it will give your child is astronomical it's through the roof how <laughs> heck it gives me joy i was i'm having fun with this thing um how does the 12 inches of string work you know what by the time we wrapped it around that pull handle uh, it worked rather well. It gave very little. There is no strangulation hazard there whatsoever. However, I would caution you, um, do not let your child play with this unsupervised. Um, this is, anytime you have string or rope or something like that involved in a toy, there is always the risk of some kind of strangulation and it worries me. Um, so please do not let your child play with this unsupervised. Guys, there is all kinds of ways that you can modify this toy. Um, the biggest one that comes to mind is the size. You can make this as small or as little as you wish. As long as you have enough room on that post, the top post of the top, to be able to fit your string into so that, you know, the child can feed it in and pull it out and it will release, then you know, there's really no limitations. You can make these little small ones, you can make them big. How about this? How about um, making several of them and having a couple children have them battle it out in the lid of a cardboard box? Put them in, it's like an arena. They both fire their tops into there and away they go. Um, there was a toy like that when I was a kid. I don't remember what it was called, but anyway, a battle tops or something like that. But either way, guys, this is a great project, a load of fun, and you can whip these things off in like half an hour, 45 minutes. It really takes no time at all. Um, I think I spent more time setting up and moving the cameras than what I actually did making the project. Uh, so, you know what? It's a worthwhile project. It's a great toy. It's a lot of fun regardless of your age. Give it a try, guys. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. If you are interested in the pattern for this uh, top or this toy, by all means, visit my website at www.acutabovewoodworkings.com. Don't forget the S on the end of woodworkings. Um, so acutabovewoodworkings.com. You click on the free pattern section and every pattern that I've ever offered on the show is in that section there for you to browse. There's the picture of the finished project, there is the accompanying tutorial video, so today's show, as well as a PDF file of the pattern for you to download absolutely free. I don't want anything for it, I want you guys to enjoy it. It was made to share and that's why it's on the website. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the future notifications of the program. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed this shorter show. I hope you've enjoyed the project. I really hope that you're going to try this one for yourself because it's a load of fun. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.